Okay, we're back with our show on the paranormal. You know, the dictionary defines paranormal as anything beyond the norm. And then it says, see Michael Jackson. <laughs> well, helping us tonight as we explore the paranormal is the one, the only, the astounding Andy. But you know, Andy, a lot of people say what you do is nothing but parlor tricks, nothing but smoke and mirrors. How do you respond? Well, Dick, I respond by... That's astounding. Thank you. <laughs> well, our next guests are hoping you can help them, too. Not only did they meet on Nightstand, they went on to be married right here on our show. Let's see a clip of the first time they met. Now, our third eligible bachelor is a former asbestos miner who's a self-admitted workaholic. Diana, say hello to bachelor number three. <laughs> Ho, 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 ho! No smoking here, no smoking. Sorry, I didn't see the sign. Well, it was love at first sight for those two, and it was followed by a whirlwind romance of champagne, caviar, and karaoke bars, as seen in this clip of their second stint on our show. Diana, where's your husband? Oh, sorry, Dick. He's just putting his cigarette out in the back. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> oh, there's bachelor number three. <laughs> bachelor number three, where you been? So I'm late. I switched to 100 and they take so long to finish. Well, you sound well. So what have you two been up to since that big day? Uh, we had a wonderful honeymoon. We moved into a cute little townhouse. And we're still regular at Tony Romas on karaoke night. Very good, very good. Well, you two seem inseparable. We're even working together now. Oh, great. Where? At the airport. We're the ones who say... The white zone is for the loading and unloading of passengers only. Uh, but I understand now there's a little trouble in that marriage, is that right? Well, there wasn't one until his mother died and moved in with us. Oh, man, doesn't that smell? <laughs> what you're saying, Diana, is that your dearly departed mother-in-law has become an ever-present spirit in your once happy home? We have no privacy. My husband won't even use the bathroom in our own home. It's no big deal. I just go down to the gas station. You know, you know, Dick, I, I think this ghost is lingering on because she has some unfinished business. Well, I don't know why she's got the bathroom all to herself. Dick, do you know what it's like to make love while your mother-in-law is watching you? I don't even like it when my own mother's watching me. No, she's a ghost, and she's watching us right now. Well, any suggestions from our sage of the supernatural? Well, yes, I think this calls for a seance, Dick. Ooh. Let's all get together and hold hands. Okay. You know, I can do this because my mother's a medium. Says so in the back of her dress. <laughs> can we lower the lights, please? Ha -ha. <laughs> I I I'm sorry, I get a little afraid of the dark. Still afraid of the dark at your age? <laughs> That's astounding. Thank you. <laughs> Calling upon the spirit of bachelor number three's mother. Uh, what's her name? Irene. <laughs> Irene, if you're there, give us a sign. Ooh, I think I heard something. Uh, I'm sorry, I had pork kebabs for dinner. <laughs> it's really important that we all focus our energy. Let's try again. Irene, are you there? She's with us. I can feel her presence. Good, then. Listen to me, mother of bachelor number three. You've haunted them for seasons. Now give us your reasons. Talk to me, mother Irene. I know you know what I mean. And I will not wait an hour, or you will feel my power. Wow. I 
bothering us. I'm not talking to you, Blondie. Fine. You need to do something for me. Anything, Mom. Anything you want. I want you to get a divorce, son. It's only a matter of time till we're together again. What do you say? Tough choice, bachelor number three. I say, I say, I say, I love Diana. Then Kurt, you, and I'm not leaving. Oh, yes, you are. For I am the god of hellfire. And I give you two choices. Leave now. And go towards the light. Or stay and burn forever in eternal damnation. Take whatever curse you put on your son with you. Be gone! That was astounding. Thank you. She's gone. I can feel it. And bachelor number three, what do you have to say? I feel pretty good about myself. I got, I got my voice back. I thought it was the cigarettes and the four tracheotomies I had, but it was Mom! <laughs> it looks like karaoke will have a whole new meaning for you. I can't wait to see it. Why wait? Hit it, Mueller! Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy over the life of you. Hey, we got more of the paranormal ahead, so don't die on me. And Stick I around. Hey, is your life more pathetic than anyone you've seen on this show? You can be a guest on Nightstand. Give us a call. <laughs> on a future Nightstand, she's a loving mother. I can't tell you how much joy I get playing with my two little bundles of joy. Now we're talking mother. And he's an angry brother. You also have a new show on, which is kind of like cops, but from a different point of view. Yeah, Dick, it's called Rob. Then Dick returns to his hometown for a hero's welcome. <laughs> but his big moment may be ruined. <laughs> Expected guest. No time. Oh, my. All this on Nightstand. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back to our tribute to the paranormal. <laughs> oh. With us is the astounding Andy, who will send someone in our audience back in time. So, Andy, what's the latest on past lives? Well, Dick, the current thought is that you really need to make peace with your past lives before you can live with the present. Uh, you know, in fact, in the last segment, you mentioned that you were afraid of the dark. Yeah, it's not a problem. I just sleep with a floodlight on. <laughs> right. Well, Dick, anyway, I could hypnotize you and regress you back to your former lives and find out the source of the problem. Well, that's a nice thought, but unfortunately, I cannot be hypnotized. Really? You can't be put to sleep? No, only I can put myself to sleep with a combination of grain alcohol and antihistamines. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's try anyway, shall we? Yeah, I'll give it a try. You want to hold that for me? Just go and stand over here, Dick. I'll try anything. You know me. <laughs> now, what I don't want you to do is relax, because you can't be hypnotized. Do not stare at the hypnotic spiral. Do not stare at it. Your eyes aren't getting heavy. You're not falling into a deep sleep. And you're not out. <laughs> now, Dick, you can hear the sound of my voice even though you're in a deep, deep sleep. Raise your right hand. Close enough. <laughs> Dick, I'm going to take you on a trip back through time. We're going to find out why you're afraid of the dark. Now, as you listen to the sound of my voice, I want you to let the years slip away, slip away, going all the way back to the first time that you made love to a girl. How old are you? 32. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you're with her right now, so what's going on? Oh, Carol, you're so pretty. This is going to be so good. Ah, wasn't that great? <laughs> what do you mean you don't take checks? <laughs> now, let's go back even further, Dick. Let's go way back. Let's go back to the 17th century. 1603. Where are you? Well, I'm in a play at the Old Globe. 
Bill Shakespeare's just written another gem for me. Uh-oh, time for my entrance. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is noblest... In... Line! <laughs> forget it, Dick, forget it. Obviously, your problem is not in your past lives. So it must be in your youth. So lead us, Dick, to when you were 12 years old. Where are you? I'm walking in the woods. Hey, it's really dark. Hey, Uncle Clem, thanks for taking me camping. Boy, it's really dark. What do you mean it's time for bed, Uncle Clem? Hey, there's only one sleeping bag here. <laughs> what do you mean? Uncle Clem, Uncle Clem! Ah! Uh, Dick, 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 step out of it, step out of it. What? Well, as I was saying, uh, <laughs> I can't be hypnotized. <laughs> You're absolutely right there, Dick. But uh, can we try something just for a second? Sure. Can we lower the lights, no, please? No, no, don't do that. Hey, that's strange. I'm not afraid. How did that happen? Well, let's just say it has something to do with your Uncle Clem. Oh, yeah, Uncle Clem. He gave me my first beer. <laughs> I don't remember a thing after that. <laughs> Okay, we'll have more with the paranormal right after this.